Hi everyone, this is KQ04, Spur Gear Strength and Factor of Safety. Let's jump right in. Um, I hope you're ready for more gear fun. I'm ready for more gear fun. I'm wearing my sweatbands because this uh, presentation is a bit of a workout to do it right. Um, but yeah, you should expect to spend a significant amount of time, not so much on this KQ, but on the configuration of your analysis tool. So in the last KQ, we looked at how to calculate the bending stress and contact stress that develops in a gear due to a transmitted load caused by two gears meshing. So in order to calculate a factor of safety for our gear set, we need to compare the stresses that develop to the strength of the gear set. And this is the premise of this KQ, in which you'll learn how to use the AGMA gear strength equations. So specifically, this is just about getting familiar with the strength equations and gaining a conceptual understanding of what each of the terms mean so you're ready to start programming them into your tool. So a little bit about gear failure. There are two types of gear failure. Uh, tooth breakage from bending stresses, which you can see here in this picture, the tooth just uh, breaks off. And then pitting from surface stresses, so contact stress. Of the two, bending failure is more catastrophic because you can imagine this tooth uh, breaking off and then getting stuck in the transmission it would be a good situation. Uh, but pitting comes on kind of gradually and will give either an audible or a visible warning and you can inspect the teeth. So um, just as true, we'll learn this for bearing. So after pitting begins, this, this wearing of the surface begins, ears can run for some time um, before they have to be replaced. So it's not like a, a sudden catastrophic failure. Both modes of failure are fatigue failures due to the repeated stressing of individual teeth as they come in and out of the mesh. So in other words, they're cyclic loading. So they're coming in and out of loading. All right, so this, kind of, this is kind of a busy slide, but you can copy and paste these images into your analysis tool. I really like these figures from the text because they show the process from the very beginning. So starting from, you know, calculating pitch diameter, to pitch line velocity to transmitted load. This is all what we learned last time. So gear bending stress. And then same thing over here. Gear contact stress. And then what we're learning today is the, the other part of this analysis. So the gear bending endurance strength and the gear contact endurance strength. So this is a really handy figure to just drop into your analysis tool. So just like in ME328, the process is the same. We'll compare the stress of a component to its strength to determine the factor of safety. Again, it's just more difficult here because um, the strength which, well here, it's not as simple as looking up one number in the back of a textbook. We have to modify these strength values to um, represent our situation. Okay, so yeah, put that in your analysis tool. So here they are, these are the AGMA strength equations. Um, the most confusing thing about this is going to be the nomenclature. So I'm going to go through this slowly, and I think you will probably come back to this video and maybe watch it a couple times. So um, let's just start off with what everything means. So sigma allow. This in Shigley is called the allowable bending stress. In um, my perfect world, if it were up to me, I would not call this the allowable bending stress. I would call it the actual bending stress. Because it's what you've already calculated from the AGMA gear stress equations. So kind of weird terminology. So let me show you really specifically what I mean. So this sigma all, that's the same sigma that you calculated from the previous step. It's just called allowable. Um, so that's the stress that's calculated. Okay, so ST 
is also called the allowable bending stress. Um, in my perfect world, it would not be called that because that's not really describing what it is. At least it doesn't describe that to me. So I think I would call this something like the uncorrected bending strength. But that's not, it's not what it's called in, in Shiglish. So, um, but what it is, is it really is the lab tested value for strength that hasn't been corrected um, for some other factors. So by uncorrected, we mean that its strength value is tested at 10 million cycles at room temperature at 99% reliability. But just like we did with fatigue analysis, we need to correct this lab tested strength value to match up with their real life situation. So we need to correct for the actual number of cycles, actual temperature and the desired reliability. So that's what these other factors are. So these, you can think of them as correction factors. YN helps you correct for the fact that in many cases, you're not gonna have 10 million cycles. You're probably gonna have more than that. It doesn't take that long for a steadily rotating piece of equipment to get up um, past 10 million cycles. So this allows us to um, correct for that. Temperature factor, so you may have a situation where you're not at room temperature. And then reliability factor, you may have situations where you call for a different reliability. So you, maybe you have a real high precision situation and you want to bump up the reliability, or maybe this is like a class project. So you, know, you set your reliability at 95, whatever. So that's how you, you correct for that reliability. Okay, so I'm going to go through the same thing just so you see it twice. So with the contact strength equations, let's see if it clicks a little bit better. The sigma C allowable. In the textbook, that's called the allowable contact stress. But again, it would be so great. If we could just think of it as the actual contact stress. Let's go back. So here is sigma C that you calculated with the AGMA stress equations. And that is what you're using here. There's just a little allowable tacked onto it. Okay, that's that. And then same thing with the SC. It'd be so great if this were called the uncorrected contact strength. And we need to correct that lab tested value of strength for the number of cycles, temperature, reliability. With contact only, there's this additional correction factor called CH. I'll explain it in another slide, but that's the hardness ratio factor for pitting resistance. The weird thing about it, make a note of it now, put it in your analysis tool. You only have to calculate it or take it into account, even think about it for the gear. With opinion, you just set it to one. Uh, the factor of safety, let's talk about that. So SF is a factor of safety for bending fatigue failure. And SH is a factor of safety against pitting failure. But what I think is interesting, if we were to ignore the correction factors for a moment and rearrange, we'd get SF equals the strength over the stress. So this is no different than what we've already learned about factor of safety. So in even more broad terms, we can say the capacity over the demand. We're just having to tack on all of these correction factors. And then same thing here, ignoring this, we get factor of safety equals strength over stress. So if you can just hold on to that concept, I think um, the terminology will fall into place, but just don't lose sight of that big picture concept.
You can rearrange the bending and contact strength equations to get direct expressions for factor of safety. So I have both of these versions in my analysis tool. I'll also show you how to use goal seek. So you can just have one version in your analysis tool. But here we go again. If we took apart, took away these correction factors, we have the regular expressions for factor of safety. Okay, so let's go through um, how to find what are called allowable bending stress, but AKA uncorrected bending strength. values. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, these values come from testing and they are tabulated. So Shigley only gives kind of a, a small sample of these published values, but there have been many more tests on materials beyond this, but this is, you know, these are, these are commonly used gear materials. So we're just going to be looking at steel. So Steel, you have different types of heat treatments, and I will specify the heat treatments in problem statements. And then here is our uncorrected bending strength values as a function of the grade of steel. So higher precision applications require a larger grade of steel. Grade two is really standard for most machine components. Grade three would be like a precision component. In the details, if you are given the Brunel hardness, for your steel, and it's through hardened, you want to use figure 14.2. And again, really easy to just copy and paste these uh, tables or figures rather into your analysis tool. So notice how there's grade one, grade two, and then the Brunel hardness. So the equations of these lines, you can also work out from um, eyeballing the table, but I think in this case, the equations are easy enough to just put into your Excel tool. If I say, you know, carburized and hardened, then you can just read the uncorrected bending strength values directly from the table. And then a very similar looking table. So we can think of this as uncorrected contact strength. Values, again, they come from lab testing, 10 to the seventh cycles. Remember, 10 to the seventh is seven zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 10 million, and 99% reliability for steel gears. And same exact thing. You have heat treatment through hardened, and you have the Brunel hardness. You use the equations depending on your steel grade. Otherwise, if you're given a different type of heat treatment, you can just read the values off the table directly. And you also have to know your grade of steel. You have three choices. So um, let's say you do that whole thing and you figure out your factors of safety. Little interesting thing here. Uh, I guess I should have started with this bullet point on this slide, but you need to compare the bending factor of safety to the contact factor of safety squared to determine whether bending or wear is a threat to function. And that's because um, for bending fatigue stress, the stress is linear with the transmitted load, and for contact fatigue stress, the stress is not linear with the transmitted load. So if we go back to this slide. Okay, so what I mean by this linear. So with bending stress, you see a linear relationship between the bending stress and transmitted load. With the contact stress, we don't. We have this square root factor. So that's what it's talking about. Bending has a linear relationship. Contact stress does not have a linear relationship. So let's do a quick example. Let's say that your bending factor of safety is 1.3 and your wear factor of safety is 1.17. So we can't just do therefore wear is the threat. We can't do that. We have to do 
we compare it to 1.17 squared, 1.37. So in this case, we would say that bending is the threat to function. This table looks a little crazy. We're going to use a very small portion of this table. So this is how we correct for the number of cycles. It's called the stress cycle factor for bending stress. But again, this is, I just think of this as the number of cycles strength correction factor. Because we're applying it to that uncorrected strength. Here is the 10 to the seventh region. Um, if you have an estimated number of cycles that's below that, then you have to pay special attention to the actual type of steel that you have. Like I was saying earlier, in most common situations, you're going to have a cycle number that's above 10 million because it doesn't take that long to get to 10 million. So then it becomes a little bit easier. So we have YN um, for this top curve and YN for this bottom. Um, N is just the number of cycles. I don't think I've seen this yet, but I could see how someone might think that N is the number of teeth because like last week it was. So in this situation, N is not the gear truth count. It's the number of cycles. Um, programming into your analysis tool. I think it's great just to copy paste this figure into your analysis tool, but in your YN cell itself, I would just stick to this equation because it's for commercial applications and that's what we're going to be looking at. This bottom is for precision critical service operations. You get the same exact, although a little bit simpler figure for the contact. Strength correction factor for number of cycles. And again, in your analysis tool, just throw that uh, top portion of the curve. Okay, temperature factor is pretty easy. So the lubricant temperature is often a reasonable measure of gear temperature. Um, you know, you can imagine that if you wanted to figure out how hot your gears were, you might not want to touch hot metal, but you could dip a thermometer in um, the gear lubricant. For steel materials and oil temperatures up to 250 degrees F, you can just set KT equal to one. Again, this is the default situation for our class. Um, for higher temperatures, KT would be greater than one, but the Shigley text doesn't give a formula. I was curious and looked in um, my favorite design textbook, Norton, and found the following. Uh, I'm just giving it to you for future reference. I don't think you need to put it in your analysis tool, but um, just know that if you, if you do have like a hot application, you would have to somehow correct for that. And then reliability factor, this is exactly the same as it was in fatigue. And the concept is the same as well. Material fatigue failures are empirically derived, so they're obtained from testing. And anytime you have any type of testing, you're gonna have variation in your data. So the gear strength, ST and SC, are based on 99% reliability you may have a situation that calls for a different level of reliability. So you would just simply use the KR from this value. There's no equation for it, just copy paste this into your Excel tool. Okay, and then we're at the last factor. This is the hardness ratio factor, and it's a function of the gear ratio and the relative hardness of the pinion and the gear. So we have the gear ratio here, and then we have this relative hardness ratio. So the um, hardness of the pinion is on top, and the hardness of the gear is on the bottom. So essentially, the pinion has fewer teeth than the gear, and hence is subjected to more cycles of contact stress. So we want the pinion to be more resistant to contact stress, so greater hardness. So in a nutshell, this factor accounts for the hardness ratio of the pinion and the gear. Um, you can see that your hardness ratio factor goes up when your uh, ratio of hardness is the pinion to the gear goes up. If you have pretty similar hardnesses, so your ratio is less than 1.2, 
you just use CH equal one. And again, this is only applied to the gear, not to the beam. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my analysis tool for this section. Here's some optional things. Um, I have expanded my tool as of yesterday to have four different boxes with the same formula in them so I can look at uh, four different gears. And I did this mostly out of being able to, to show you when I'm making these videos what all the different gear strengths and factors of safety would be. Uh, you don't have to set yours up like this. So number of cycles is an input. The sigma C allow, remember that's the, is the contact stress actually occurring. So I would just pull that in from a prior sheet. At the end, you can see I have the formula in here and it is a function of N. Um, these are all things that I would have to enter. So nothing fancy, just looking at the chart, entering those in. And then the figures that you might want to include, I have table 14.6 and then table 14.5. Table 14.3 and 14.2. So that's how you would look up the uncorrected strength value. So I would have those in here. I have these equations in. So the function of the Brunel hardness. You can have a Brunel hardness of the case. So that would be the outer surface of the gear that's different from the hardness of the core. Okay, it's reliability chart, this um, hardness ratio chart. And then I have the uh, correction for the number of cycles. But that's it. So it's actually not too bad. And then Austin taught us this really cool trick. So if you click on a column and you do view, freeze panes, show you what it does. So you don't have to keep like scrolling through your whole sheet so you can just you know freeze your input section and you know scroll through all of your charts so that's kind of a nice function so not so bad again just give yourself enough time for your analysis tool it looks like a lot but it really is just entering these equations making some colorful cells and putting some charts here okay thanks for watching i'll see you again